Oh, look at that big slobber you got. You almost never have slobbers like that, but. Welcome back to another Tim and Yoshi show. This is the economic portion of the show. Just filmed a uh, you know more kind of conspiracy slash general shit that's going on type show. But you know sticking to the economic data, you know, a lot of people want to know what's going on with the stock market. And honestly, the best way to determine what's going on to the stock market is actually look at the bond market because really the bond market is where all the debt is issued and the debt is basically our money is it's not even our money but the money we use or the currency we use is debt and so this whole system is basically predicated on getting more and more debt into the system so then that way the debt can then be leveraged out and that way people can buy more shit that they can't afford or that way companies like blackrock and blackstone can then come in and buy up all the houses and um you know, it's just absolutely insane. So, you know, it's easier for companies and corporations to, to do that when the Fed funds rate is, you know, essentially zero versus, um, you know, when, when borrowing costs go up. And so right now, you know, borrowing costs are going up dramatically on the grand scheme of things, still obviously very low, but you've got the 10 year coming in at like 2.8. I believe the two year was like 2 point, uh, sorry, I think it was the, yeah, the 10 year, I think it was 2.8. And then I think the two year was like 2.78. And so pretty much the same, or sorry, no, maybe that was, a, maybe that was, sorry, that was a 30 year. So the 30 year, I think it was like 2.82. And then it was 2.8 for the 10 year. So you'd have to be insane to take it out for 30 years. But you know, what is going on right now? And, and I do have this as of, uh, let me try to, I gotta zoom in on this picture. It's really kind of sunny out right now, but there is an image, we'll get it on screen uh, for you guys right now. But it shows that essentially you have you know investment grade bonds were down and this is as of i think it was march 24th yeah march 24th investment grade bonds were down 8.1 percent high yield bonds were down 6.9 uh government bonds were down six point was it six point seven stocks were down 6.5 bitcoin was down 5.2 the dollar was up 3.1 uh gold was up 5.9 commodities up, were up almost 45 then oil was uh, about 53%. Now, again, this was as of a couple weeks ago. So, you know, but those numbers, it's just the, the greater, the point is not the what the exact number is. The point is that the safest stuff, and I can't really do air quotes because my hands are full, but the safest stuff is the stuff that lost the most amount of money. And so, you know, why is that? Well, there's something called interest rate risk. And interest rate risk effectively is when you have the price of rates, when the rates are going up, the underlying values of bonds go down. So if you used to be able to earn, you know, 2% on a bond, now you can earn 4% on the bond. Well, who's gonna wanna buy your 2% bond if now you can go out in the market and buy a 4% one? So, I mean, somebody will at a certain price, but you've gotta discount that price. And the mechanism to find out the discount of that price is something, uh, when you take a look at the duration, so technically duration and the maturity of the bonds are technically not the same thing, but it's kind of getting into like real nerd dork type stuff and kind of splitting hairs. But let's say you've got a 10 year duration bond, rates go up 1% and the underlying value of the bond goes down by 10. If you have a 20 year bond, rates go up one, underlying value goes down by 20. 30 year bond, rates go up by one, underlying value goes down by 30. So you guys get the point. Five year bond, rates go up by one, underlying value goes down by five. Rates go up 2% on a 10 year bond, underlying value would go down, uh, you know, probably about like 22% once you count compounding that's in there. And so effectively with the rates going up, then the underlying value of the bonds are going down. And so I actually theorized at one point, and this question actually made it to Janet Yellen herself, uh, actually, it may have been Ben Bernanke. At the I can't remember if it was Bernanke or Yellen. Uh, and actually, Peter Schiff actually commented on this question, which was actually my question that David Schweikert asked. And effectively, I can't even remember the whole question, but basically it got to the, I was saying, well, you guys are talking about the Fed Fed rates going up, but you know, effectively, if the, if the interest rates did go up to the level that you guys said they would, and this is probably like 2017 or 2018, uh, I'm like, then wouldn't the underlying values of your bonds uh, basically plummet? And then instead of the Federal Reserve actually making money, the Federal Reserve would actually lose money. And traditionally, you guys have taken 6% of the profit and then given it back to the Treasury. I mean, now would it get to the point that you guys would have losses? And then are you going to start issuing, uh, you know, basically sending the Treasury a bill when those losses occur? And I believe it was Janet Yellen, and she said, 
that it was uh, impossible, that my scenario was impossible. And I'm like, no, an alien attack tomorrow is technically possible. And not only is it not, um, not impossible, it's actually the most probable, and Peter Schiff agreed with this as well, that this was the most probable case for what would be going on in the future. And so now, I mean, it showed that even back then I was worried about this, where you have a situation where effectively the, uh, the safe stuff has been doing even worse than all the risky stuff. I mean, the risky stuff has been doing you know, bad too, but, uh, but when, you're, when people are in things for safety and all of a sudden they find out that their safety is what's causing them to lose the most amount of money, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And so, uh, you know, I mean, basically what you've, and I think since then, I mean, Bitcoin, I mean, it's been up and down, but, you know, yeah, Bitcoin was even performing better than, you know, than the safer type bonds, uh, you know, past performance notification, future returns. But, you know, eventually what's going to happen is the Fed's going to, they have to either choose to save the dollar uh, or the bond market or the stock market. And so they're not going to let the, they can only let the stock market go down so much. And so, yeah, they're going to basically raise rates or pretend they can, and then they'll find some excuse to then lower them again at another point in the future. And so I expect them to have rates, uh, you know, that do go up a little bit, and then, you know, either another variant comes out or another thing gets kicked off with Russia or gets kicked off into another, you know, higher gear or something's going on with that. And so, you know, that's a pretty easy thing to predict because, uh, you know, it's like predicting that within the next week or two, it's going to be getting like really hot here in Arizona. I mean, it's not, you know, a super tough thing to predict. I mean, that's just what the nature of the beast is. And so, you know, when, so a lot of people are, who are in retirement, near retirement age are going to get shellacked because, you know, they're going to want to try to keep their money safe and then they're going to put their money in bonds. And then let's say you're in a 20 year bond and the rates go up 2%. Well, now you've lost about probably about 42, 43, 44%. But then you're getting paid, okay, like 2% interest. So you got a million bucks making $20,000 a year. You don't get your money back for 20 years. By the time you get your money back, all the horses are gonna be out of the barn. Or you've got to then cash in and lose 40% right at the top, which is also not a great option. So a lot of people in bonds are gonna get absolutely shellacked or this doesn't happen, the rates don't get up and then you're just stuck making nothing. So, you know, or the rates go down and then you make money, but then, the rates are negative and then you're then losing money. I mean, you're already losing, the rates are already negative. I mean, with a, you know, stated inflation rate of, let's call it eight, uh, we, all, we all know it's much higher than that. I wrote a whole book on it, but so let's say it's eight and uh, the Fed funds rates is, I don't know what it is, like 0.5. Okay, great, we got a negative seven and a half percent real yield right now. Awesome. So, and, and I think it was like Bank of America sees, what do they see this bank of america and citibank see 50 point race 50 point 50 basis point hike coming in may uh and then i think the fed came out there and we're saying that they're not opposed to doing multiple 50 point 50 basis point rate hikes so that's been spooking the market as of late and then you have um you know what was it i believe it was goldman sachs saying that they need the the fed needs to hike past four percent to get inflation under control and then BOA and City said that they expect the Fed to get north of 2% this year. And there's no way. And then like, just imagine what would happen to like housing. Like, like already out here in Phoenix, I mean, a lot of these houses going up over here. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to, talk. I guess, you know, I was in a place like not too far away from here. And uh, it was like the first starter home ever built. I think it like at the low of the market in 2012, I think it was like 189. Well, today that house, unfortunately I sold it like four years ago. It was worth like, sold it for about 300. So it had a good profit on that. But then today it's worth 550. And then my ex and I were building a home that was, I think was going for like 420 in March of 2020. And now, and then we canceled that and got rid of her. And now, uh, I think the house was going for like 880 the other day. And we're talking two years going from 420 and obviously easy number to remember to 880. Uh, so it's just, you know, craziness to think that, uh, you know, that somehow there's a big pandemic going on and everybody's dying. And yet, so everybody's dying and the fucking housing prices go up by 100%. I mean, riddle me that. I mean, how does that happen? Uh, and, and the thing is like, not only has the housing gone up 100% or let's say even from last year, let's say it's up like 40% from last year at least out here in Phoenix. So, 
it goes up 40 percent but then not only is that going up but then the borrowing costs are going from uh you know going from three percent to five percent and so it's gonna get to the point where people like aren't even gonna be able to afford these homes now obviously i can afford a home but uh you know i think sort of like the only reason to get a home is if you're trying to like bug out or get some place away from the city or get some place where you can grow food or something and survive this or get a place you want to be for the next 10 years or just have a place you know you want to rent out but then you know can afford cash flow if something's going on but you know it just seems like it's craziness and that but at the end of the day though you know if we take a look out like 10 20 years from now i expect real estate to go massively insane because we're just gonna the fed's gonna keep deciding to print a bunch of money they're not going to stop their money printing they might stop it uh you know briefly and they might say they're going to stop it but they're not actually going to stop it for any meaningful time period to actually do anything oh look at that big slobber you got you almost never have slobbers like that but they're outside for like two hours now at this point so it's like in this really tricky situation where from like a real estate perspective i mean you can probably make the argument that aside from like the last few months that the rates are actually more uh lower today than they were even a few years ago because when the inflation was zero and the and the uh interest rates were let's say three percent well then you had you know a plus three percent but then now with inflation let's call it an eight which obviously we know it's higher than that eight but then the mortgage rate is five it's actually now it's like a negative three percent sort of like mortgage interest rate when you price it in, in real terms and so when you price things in these real terms you know it actually could be look you know she you're dirty boy it actually could be the situation where you know we haven't since we have this negative rate that you see the housing prices going up because there's such like a crunch in the supply because people don't want to sell their home that they have it like a two point whatever rate or three percent rate to then go into a home that has a five or six or seven or eight percent rate because they just don't want to give that up and so it's going to create like more of like a demand for uh you know people uh you know just turning their homes into rentals or not letting go of them or maybe there could be some wave of people trying to cash in uh you know as to see what's going on but you know it's like really the one thing that i've been terrible at when it comes to prognosticating because obviously i cost myself a lot of money by uh you know selling that home four years ago then having to piss away basically all the money i made in rent and then now uh you know that home costs you know basically double so you know screw myself on that one but you know i've made lots of other home runs and uh you know grand slams and other things but you know you're not always going to be right you know just highlights and no one has a crystal ball and we all gotta know when to take our losses over here so that one sort of sucks uh but you know if you thought trump was going to lose and you thought this is going to last for at least two years or 18 months i think is what i said at the time uh then it'd be hard to predict that all this stuff would be great for housing especially when you've had you know a lockdown for like two years but you know i guess we haven't we've been that locked down here in Arizona, but you know, I was already pissed at the amount of freedoms they took before 2020 happened, uh, and now I just like want to get back to where we're at, you know, before 2020. And so that's what they do. They, you know, take a few steps forward, then take a few steps back, and then advance the tyranny 10 steps, then bring it back two, then go 10 more, and bring it back another two or three. And then, you know, kind of like the last financial thing I want to bring up here, my voice, like I mentioned in the last video, I had to record the last one twice, and so I'm running out of. Uh, running out of uh <laughs> the ability to talk right now ah sorry for that i needed to get something on my throat but uh you also have china that's now going and basically accepting uh or being able to pay in yuan for their oil so let me see what the article here is from zero hedge brenton woods three china begins buying russian coal and oil in yuan and so i mean all along the plan that i've been prognosticating since 2013 was to have a war with either Russia or China. So then that way, when they bring the dollar down, they can then blame it on one of those two boogeymen and not the fact that it was systemically set up as a fraud to begin with. So this is all playing into the hands. It's all playing into excuses for the Fed to print more money. It's all playing into who could have ever predicted this or who could have ever seen this coming and then having an excuse to basically flip the system into a digital system that will be the central bank digital currency that once that's launched, they're gonna have you buy the you know what. And so, you know, I do see a world where the crash is actually gonna come from the average person, purchasing power and not necessarily come from like a traditional 2008 crash. Now it might, like in the early stages, like we saw like in March and April, 2020, like we might get that and then, um, but, but ultimately, you know, you go back to Germany and, and their stock market went from like 400 to 27 million within 10 years. And 
you know, not saying that that's exactly going to happen here, but I think the trajectory is to have non-debt financial assets that are probably going to go through the roof as the currency collapses, and then they'll have war, and then they'll have, you know, famines and all sorts of other shit and viruses, and it's going to be real fun. So, you know, I'm having an amazing apocalypse, and like, I've probably been having some of the best, you know, year or two of my life the past couple of years to design my life to basically do the things that I want to do for for the most part. I mean, obviously there's some things I don't want to do, like having to go home and clean the manure off of him. I mean, it's actually on the other other side. I was able to get you know quite a bit off in the, uh, the sprinkler, but ah, but yeah, it's just the whole world's going to shit. Yoshi's gone to shit, and now uh, yeah, I mean it's. But you know, I'm, I ultimately I think like people like me and like people following my advice, and not that this is recommendations or advice, but you know, just being prepared in general. I think. Two months ago, I said you'd have to be retarded to not have a food supply. I mean, even the retarded president has come out and said, uh, you know, it's not really a president, obviously he's a puppet, and they want to make it seem to be like, oh, if we just remove Joe Biden, that things are going to get better when he's there to be a fall guy. But, you know, even he came out and was talking about food shortages. So when you have one puppet mentioning food shortages, and then you've got me, you know, two months beforehand, you know, saying, hey, you guys should really have food shortages. You know, at this point, it's so late in the game that you'd be retarded. Uh, so, you know what, if you took offense to that because you didn't weren't prepared, well then quit being retarded and go get yourself prepared. prepared. I mean, sometimes you need a quick, swift kick in the ass to do something and, and don't tell me, oh, I can't afford it or, you know, everyone can afford, you know, basically mine was built up over the past, you know, 12, 13 years, buying a little bit at a time. So and we can, anyone, when, when you go, I mean, now it's probably a little bit too late in the game to be, you know, getting one extra can of this or that at the store and building things up over time. But, um, you know, I know, I think Josh is something, it's like whamsurvival.com, I'm not making anything off of this, but, uh, you know, I've used his, I've used that for probably about like six months of the supply that I have. Um, but yeah, we're getting long in the tooth in this, you know, definitely, again, I'm not selling this stuff, I'm not uh, making any money off it, but I would go check out that, check out things like, uh, I'm gonna have the, I got a fighter jet above my head, but we got gonna have, this, I use this one product called Spiz. I don't know if the name is just terrible. I'm going to be interviewing that guy who uh, created that, but it's this really caloric, dense drink that was meant for people who like bike across America and some crazy ultra endurance type stuff. But you know, in terms of like a survival food that has a lot of good shelf life and doesn't take up much space, uh, you know, if you've got access to water, I'd say this would be like another good alternative. Again, not making any money off of this, not making any plugs. Uh, you know, pitching anything, but you know, something I've been using. But yeah, I will be interviewing that guy coming up soon as well. But anyways, uh, make sure you guys check out the libertyadvisorshow.com. Make sure you check us out at Float Fest. We'll be heading there at the end of the month. Also, we'll be headed to, uh, actually, we'll be heading to Mexico, but you guys probably won't be checking me out there, obviously. And uh, I will be doing more videos with Josh Sigerson as well, as he's going to be coming out and staying with me for a little bit. And uh, yeah, find us on Rockfin now, find us on Rumble now, find us on Spotify now. Those are some of the places that we weren't before. And then Rockfin is going to host exclusive content. They're going to host different presentations, different, more like premium content and different uh, you know, videos that are kind of geared towards people that made money in crypto or uh, different, you know, more like financial planning type stuff that is m more involved and more, I guess, high end than these sort of videos I'm just spitballing. But anyways, my battery is about to die. I'm almost at the car. I will talk to you guys later. TheLibertyAdvisorShow.com. Take care.